Good morning, I'm Rowena Crosby. And I'm Deborah Renner, and we're your co-hosts for this show. Thank you for joining us for the next 17 minutes for your IT show. Nope, we're not talking information technology. We're talking your invisible toolbox, the show that looks at the tools for working effectively with people. And we welcome you to today's live broadcast. Today is September 11th, 2017. Do you remember where you were on that historic day in 2001? Any of us who are at least 25 years of age probably has a vivid recall of where we were on that day. I know, Deb, for you, it was personally very emotional. You had a son who was flying an airplane and two daughters in New York City. I did, and they were all in their early 20s, and I was so proud of how they handled the circumstances. Of course, Stephen grounded the plane. The girls were 10 blocks from the Trade Center, and they had, they were part of the masses of running away. And I'll never forget the phone call I got from the father of the friend they were staying with telling me that he had said just get out, get going uptown, and how thankful I was to Tim Rock and his wife Connie, who happened to be in New York, who later took them in that night. They worked throughout the day. They worked through the day. Uh, I think every year, though, however, not just of their experience, but I think of all of the phone calls that came in of people who lost their loved ones at that time. That phone call for me certainly was a caution, but my my children were safe. Yes. And what about Tara? Where were we at on that day? Well, that, it's an important question because it didn't just impact us all personally. There were huge implications to business, and we had three clients in the midst of leadership academies on that day. One actually had a class scheduled that day. It was the first time in the history of the company we'd cancel the class because businesses were scurrying around trying to make sure their employees and their clients were safe wherever mm -hmm. they were that day. Well, as you can see, we're taking a break from our usual discussion of interpersonal tools and skills to really reflect and turn our attention on, first of all, the men, the women, the children who perished in 9-11. We want to think about and commemorate them today. We also want to reflect on all those heroes. You know, Tim and yes. Connie Rock were heroes to me. We had so many accidental heroes who showed up to just do what they could do to help. And others were first responders who dedicate their lives to the service of helping others. And in our development challenge, we're going to take a look at what does heroism look like in our own lives. Mm -hmm. And during the interview segment of our program, we will be joined by Director Beth Townsend. Director Townsend is a lawyer and an Air Force veteran. She has also served as director of the Iowa Civil Rights Commission, turning that agency around yes. when it was in her care from being dysfunctional. Today, she serves as the director of Iowa Workforce Development, and that's a state agency providing employment services for individual job seekers. We are so excited she'll be joining us today for this program. Yes, that's going to be very mm -hmm. exciting. And frequent viewers know that we look at a tool in the book that Deb and I co-authored, Your Invisible Toolbox. So every week we look at one tool. Today we're in chapter 53. It's called The Shoulders of Giants. How do you define heroes or who are your heroes? And it turns out there's as many definitions for a hero as there are people who are asked to define hero. So we've gone to Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, and they classify hero in three categories. The first is a mythological or legendary figure that has all these brave acts. The second is a male figure in a dramatic or a literary role, and not to worry, not a gender bias, a female in that role mm -hmm. is called a heroine. And the third category is the object of devotion or admiration. And so for our purposes today, we're not going to be looking at the definition of hero as a type of sandwich. <laughs> but that is another definition. It is. Well, when asked to discuss heroes, people usually come up with a family member, a teacher, or a public figure they've heard about. Mm -hmm. One that comes to mind is Captain Sullenberger. We called him Sully. He was the pilot that landed the plane in the Hudson in 2009 when the engines were disabled. And we look on a grander scale to the men and the women who were there in terms of Ground Zero on 9-11 as our heroes as well. We do think of them as heroes. And so while there may be controversy over what is the definition of a hero, there's really very broad agreement that heroes are people that we admire and they're people that do brave acts, large and small. And on a personal level, they are people who touch our lives in a very positive way. So it's time to look, take a look at our Invisible Tool of the Week. Our Invisible Tool of the Week is found in Chapter 53 of Your Invisible Toolbox, and it's inspired by Isaac Newton, who famously stated, 
If I've seen further than others, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. And that chapter is titled On the Shoulders of Giants. And the invisible tool in the chapter is to recognize past accomplishments. And it's a reminder to ourselves that nobody ever does anything truly meaningful completely alone. So it may be that we're serving on a team and working towards a team goal, or it may be that great accomplishments are made possible because of the actions of the people that came before us. Well, and it's beautifully exemplified in the book in a story about a high school social studies teacher in Little Rock, Arkansas, and her name, Martha Cothran. And in September of 2005, she taught her students an invaluable lesson. And so we're going to recount that story to you. We get choked up we every do. time we do this, so it's going to be a little bit emotional. But on that September morning in 2005, her students arrived to the classroom to find that there were no desks. And so they inquired of their teacher, where are our desks? And she said, you don't get desks until you figure out how you earn them. So they spent the day trying to figure out what the answer to that was. Was it good behavior? Was it getting good grades? And she said, no, that's not how you earn them. By early afternoon, news of this experiment had traveled. In fact, a news crew showed up to film this. And by the last period of the day, the students still hadn't figured out how they would earn their desk. And so she asked the students to go and sit down on the floor on the perimeter of the classroom. She opened the classroom door and in walked 27 US military veterans in full uniform, each one carrying a desk and placing a desk in the classroom. And then they went and stood by the students. And that's the part yeah. that chokes us up. And that's the part where the students had their aha moment. Their teacher, Ms. Cothran, said, you don't have to earn these desks. These guys did it for you. And they're placing these desks here so that you can learn responsibly, be good citizens, be good students. They paid a price for you. Don't ever forget it. No. It, can't, it chokes you up. And in 2006, the Veterans of Foreign Wars named Martha Cothran as their Teacher of the Year. And the story demonstrates how so many people have made important contributions to the lives we enjoy and live now. And so thinking about, reflecting about the lives lost on September 11th, also reflecting on those heroes, the people that came before us and the ones in the day to day, in the past and present, who give those contributions to us and we do stand on their shoulders. We do stand on their shoulders. And this is the segment of the program that we call Your Development Challenge. This is where we challenge you to challenge yourself and try something new. <laughs> and when we think of heroes, we often think of superheroes or people we hear about in yeah. the media. And because they're larger than life, we don't think of ourselves as having the potential right. of being a hero. And yet we all hold the seeds of heroism. And so our development challenge this week is an idea of how we can be a hero. In some small way. Yeah. And so what we invite you to do this week is to figure out how you can serve others. It could be by volunteering your time. It could be by volunteering your treasure. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't take a lot of time to read to children mm -hmm. or to serve meals at a shelter, but it has such a huge impact on the recipient of that. And in terms of financial donations, it doesn't even have to be a huge amount. What we've seen is a large number of people coming together making financial contributions adds up to a lot that can make a meaningful difference. So while we honor the events of 9-11 today, we're also remembering those suffering from the hurricanes, mm -hmm. the Hurricane Harvey and Irma and the devastation that that has caused mm -hmm. across the Caribbean and in the U.S and invite you to think about how you can serve others this week. And what a week to be able to do that. There are so many people acting courageously and heroically helping others out with these devastating events. And so make this your development challenge this week. In what way can you express your own heroism? Absolutely. Well, those of you who follow Tarot on social media already know that we post several times every day useful links to interpersonal skills yes. topics. Today, we're gonna highlight two of them. And our first featured post is to a 2005 article that was published in Business Insider. And it chronicles the story of seven individuals mm -hmm. on September 11th, 2001. It is inspiring and an absolute must read on this important anniversary today. You'll find a link to that on Altero social media platforms today. And it's been said that those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. 
Our second featured social media post this week is to the official site for the 9-11 Memorial War Memorial Museum, Memorial and Museum, and we so encourage you to visit this site. When you go to this site, you can find out about the victims, the heroes, and take a virtual tour of this museum and download resources so that you can think and talk about this piece of history with others. And this will be on all social media platforms on Tuesday. And now we're moving to the segment of the program we call This Week's Interview. And we are delighted to welcome to our table Director Beth Townsend. She is the Director of Iowa Workforce Development and is a U.S. military veteran and has a wonderful perspective for us. Thank you so much for joining us. We're well, delighted to have you here today. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, we're so thrilled to have you here. Before we start our interview, would you share with our viewers a little bit about your background? Sure, sure. Uh, I was born in Iowa. My dad was an ag teacher in Sydney, Iowa in the 1960s. Uh, and then he got a job as an administrator in a small town in Nebraska. So that's where I uh, grew up. Uh, returned to Iowa in 2000 after serving in the military for about 11 and a half years after I graduated from law school. Uh, practiced in, uh, privately uh, in civil rights work and then was fortunate enough to be appointed by Governor Branstead to be the director of the Civil Rights Commission. And then when he started his second term, he gave me the opportunity to be the director of Iowa Workforce Development. Uh, we were so hoping today as we were going to take a look and reflect on 9-11 to be able to have an interview guest that would be someone who had a personal experience with this. And as a former uh, JAG in the U.S. Air Force, you have a very important perspective to share. So let's, let's talk about that. Where were you on that day and how did you react to 9-11? Well, I, w I remember I was at home getting ready for work here in Des Moines. Um, I had only been off active duty for about five or six months at that point. Uh, and so when the news came on, um, I'm sure I was as shocked and angered and, uh, and frightened as everyone as the events mm -hmm. unfolded that morning. Um, but on a deeper level, I was concerned because I knew we would have a military response. Mm -hmm. And I thought about my brothers and sisters in arms and what it would mean uh -huh. to them to be sent into harm's way because of this um, attack. I don't think any uh, of us, that wasn't our mm -hmm. initial response. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you feel the events of 9-11 impacted history? Well, I think it changed the world in the sense that it reminded the world that we are a globe. And, you know, historically, United States has been fairly isolated from global mm -hmm. events because nothing ever came over here. Right. We weren't attacked at home. And this was a reminder that we are not isolated, mm -hmm. that world impact or world events will impact us, even in Des Moines, Iowa. Mm -hmm. I mean, your children mm -hmm. being in New York City mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think that something that happened across mm -hmm. the world would impact your neighborhood. And it did. Yes. How did the tragedy change you personally? Well, I think it changed me in the sense that um, it, it reminded us again that we are that nowhere is safe mm -hmm. necessarily, mm -hmm. but on the other hand, we're all in this together still. Mm -hmm. What I love about America's response to 9/11 was the reminder that we we are one. Mm -hmm. We may fight amongst ourselves, we may mm -hmm. disagree uh, strongly, <laughs> but at the end of the day, we are all Americans and we will all always come together to, to be Americans first. Yes. Is there someone you can think of or thinking of honoring those heroes? Who would you think of in terms of honoring based on 9-11? When I think about 9-11 and people to honor, I think of course about the victims. But I also think about the first responders. Mm, yes. I think about the firemen. I mm. think about the policemen who ran into oh. the fire. I think about the military members who mm -hmm. ran into the Pentagon after the plane crashed. And I remember, and I, and I think mm -hmm. that was a, um, it, it brought home to us the lesson of, of what they sacrifice and the courage mm -hmm. that, they, that they display every single day. It's amazing, isn't it, it when is. you think about it. You know, when we were thinking about um, the months immediate, immediately following, there seemed to be a new level of patriotism and also kind of a new, greater compassion among people. Why is it that events like this just bring people together? Well, I think it's because it helps us to focus on what's important. Mm -hmm. On a day-to-day, day-to-day, um, -day, we get lost on how mm -hmm. 
to get to what's important and we lose tr lose sight of yeah. what really is important and so when a crisis yeah. um, occurs or a tragedy we stop fighting about how to do what we need to do and we just do it mm -hmm. and is. we focus on the what and I think that's the that's the lesson that, that uh, these types of events remind us. Oh, so true. And is it possible to have that effect without the tragedy or the crisis? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we have to focus on getting past the noise. Mm -hmm. I think that um, sometimes we get so caught up in we have to be right, we have to do it our way. Mm -hmm. um, even if we're, we all have good intent and we're all trying to get to the same place, mm -hmm. we get lost in making sure that we get it done the way we want it to get done as opposed to let's get this done for the benefit of others. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Such a good reminder. Yes. Well, you have had so many very important positions and made so many important contributions and I know right now you're involved with Future Ready Iowa. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Uh, well, I, I'm very appreciative of the opportunities that Governor Branstad and Governor Reynolds have given me. I mean, I have a great staff and a great team and the entire state is working hard on Future Ready Iowa, which is an initiative to get 70% of Iowans um, educated or trained with post-secondary certification or education by 2025 because we recognize that in today's global economy 68 percent of the jobs in 2025 are going to require that level of education Absolutely. we currently have about 58 percent of iowans with that level of education or training and so we've got a 12 percent gap we need to close mm -hmm. and how are we going to do that and yeah. we can't wake up in 2023 and decide oh my gosh we've got to fix this mm -hmm. <laughs> we need to start making changes now we need to mm -hmm. figure out where um, the gaps are and how do we how do we close those gaps and how do we get people who maybe haven't had great success in education come back yes. and realize that it's not the same education yeah. where they maybe have struggled yeah. before, that there are new tools, there are new avenues for them to succeed and that that little bit of a success is going to make a huge impact on their lives and their families' lives. Oh, oh, such wonderful. important work. How can people find out more about Future Ready Iowa? We have a great website called futureadyiowa.gov and it, um, it provides a wealth of information, not only about the initiative, but it also provides, uh, there's a career coach link. You can go there to find out about high demand jobs. How do I get the high demand jobs? What do they pay? What kind of education do I need? Where do I get that education? All kinds of information about getting your future ready in the state of Iowa. Oh, what a wonderful resource. Yes. So Kyle will post a link to yes. that in the, the box at the bottom of this interview. Well, thank you so thank much you for joining so us much. today. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for joining us today. If you missed any portion of the program or would like to share it with others, you'll find the entire program loaded up to Tarot's YouTube channel. Join us again next Monday morning at 9.03, where we will explore another tool in your Invisible Toolbox. And now it's your turn. We welcome your suggestions for future shows. What people challenges are you having in the workplace? What team interactions would you like us to discuss? Please email your ideas to ideas at yourinvisibletoolbox.com. And if you can get out on your favorite social media platform, you'll find us there. We're also on Instagram. And if you haven't subscribed to Tarot's YouTube channel, please subscribe using the link below, and then you'll be alerted to when future shows air. A thank you again to Kyle Plummer, our cameraman and director. And thanks again to Director Townsend yeah, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And thanks to all of you. And that's a wrap. <laughs>